Okay, at this point we built our first um, classification tree. Let's move on to an alternative technologies that would give us yet a different look at the data set. And in that department, I would uh, normally recommend, once you're done with a single tree, you should always try stochastic gradient boosting, which we also call TreeNet inside of SPM. Now, stochastic gradient boosting, or TreeNet, has a number of advantages. First of all, you're always getting more accurate models. That's one of its biggest, biggest benefits. Number two, uh, the resulting uh, predictions have a nice and smooth form, and you can always actually look inside and gain better understanding of what the nature of the relationships are. Number three, tree networks in the native logistic regression space, so it can give you not just class assignments or uh, some kind of simple classification structures and segmentations, it can actually generate predicted probabilities for you. So let's see how it works and what it means. So I go, uh, in this case, I go back to model setup by pressing on model setup button here, and I already uh, minimized all of the remaining windows on my screen. And in this case, instead of cart, we're going to switch to tree net. And notice we will work in the logistic binary setting here. Even though tree net supports classification, but that's normally for uh, when you have uh, target levels that have more than two classes. So logistic binary is optimized for targets having specifically two classes. The link is my target. All of these other variables are my uh, predictors. And as usual, testing is partitioned in the 50% learn, 50% test, and all of the remaining parts are concentrated on the tree nut tab. Again, there's some fancy theory underneath. You don't really need to know all of that. Uh, just in general, what tree nut will do, is it will build not just one tree, but multiple trees. And as it builds those multiple trees, each subsequent tree is trying to correct errors of all of the previously constructed trees. It's as if you were, if you were getting ready for some complicated test and you would work on a bunch of different questions and then uh, do some in interim testing, and identify areas where you have uh, the biggest deficiencies and then refocus your attention on those questions and if you do it systematically eventually you'll learn a lot more and the same thing will happen in TreeNet. So by default it will build 200 trees. Each tree will have a very small size, six nodes, which is also a huge advantage when you have a very large data set you can still process them using TreeNet. The learn rate will be set to automatic settings and all of the remaining settings will be pretty much set to their default uh, levels. Again, all I need to do is press start. All of that fancy machinery of uh, the predictive modeling and machine learning uh, is now happening underneath. And uh, as you can see at this point, trees are being built. Uh, and I've asked for 200 trees. It's typical uh, useful starting configuration. In some situations you may want to increase it up to 500 or maybe a thousand and I know in some cases people try to push it at even higher levels. Okay, so the end result is shown again as two curves, learn and test performance and uh, since in our case we're typically interested in performance in terms of area under ROC curve, I go immediately to that mode here by pressing this button. And as you can see, TreeNet is now getting 0.769, so it's basically 77% ROC on the test sample. As you recall, when I had the cart run before, I could only push it to 74%. So I'm getting an extra 3 points increase in the performance in terms of ROC and there you go off the bat TreeNet has already managed to improve uh, upon the models that we had before. Now how do I interpret the internals of that model? Well first of all you can always press the summary button and uh, try to see uh, what variables are being used as important variables. So in this case, not surprisingly, revolving utilization is uh, number one. I and mean, we already saw it in CART. Same thing happens in TreeNet. And then you also have all these other things like debt ratio, monthly income, age, and all of the every variable that was available to us has been utilized. Now, this is a simple, uh, very kind of... Uh, 
the uh, limited data set in terms of number of variables available. In a typical scenario, you could have uh, hundreds of variables, all sorts of difficult situations, and then TreeNet will have that natural ability to select which variables are indeed uh, the most important drivers in making uh, whatever predictions that you are interested in. Now, then you can also look at gains in ROC, confirm nice agreement between learn and test. The, the test performance is this dashed red line uh, curve. So, so far, things are fine. You can also look at things like odds, ratios, like uh, to see if you bin your predicted responses, what is the uh, response uh, uh, divided by non-response uh, ratio of uh, all of those uh, uh, different predictions based on the learn test or uh, all. And then you can also look at some things in terms of counts, like the number of responders, uh, number of non-responders, and so on and so forth. So there's some useful displays out there, and that's how the summary goes. And the next important part is uh, you can also see exactly how variables are being uh, contributing to the probability of uh, the default. So for that, I'm going to go and click on the Display Plots button. So TreeNet already generated a number of plots for you. And what I'm going to do next, I click on the Show All button. So TreeNet produces all sorts of plots. I'm not going to be interested in 3D plots in these sessions. And uh, what you see as the end result is that each variable is now shown in terms of its contribution to the log odds or in other some kind of uh, something that relates to the probability of uh, getting a default. Now in this case as you can see revolving utilization shows to have some general linear trend and whenever you see curves like this uh, TreeNet is trying to exploit data and learn from data using some internal non-parametric statistical techniques and when you look at these plots, you should always mentally smooth them out in terms of, okay, what is it, the general story that Trinet is trying to tell us? And it looks like that the revolving utilization has a positive contribution with that, uh, remember, cutoff around 40% that was so important uh, that it was highlighted by CART in a single tree in the very beginning. Uh, the number of uh, open credit lines is an interesting graph because it shows that when you have zero open lines, you have a high contribution towards delinquencies. And also when you have number of open lines exceeding 16 or 18, you have the highest contribution. Now, this is a famous nonlinear pattern, the pattern that cannot be captured by conventional linear regression or logistic regression or any techniques like that. It would normally require some kind of user intervention. But in this case, that pattern has been identified for us using totally automated approach. And of course, the best situation is uh, between here around six or eight open credit lines. That's the safest uh, situation. The monthly income, same story, another nonlinear pattern that shows rising trend in the beginning, uh, up about uh, the point when you're reaching about two, three thousand, then you have the greatest contribution towards the delinquency and then it gradually decreases with perhaps a reversal of the trend later on. Again, this pattern was learned strictly from the data set. I didn't impose any assumptions and that actually provides me some important uh, uh, ideas uh, as far as segmentation goes or what are the diff different types of the accounts that I, I may have. The number of dependents is also interesting, zero dependents associated with uh, the smallest uh, risk and then as the number of dependents rises, especially as it goes above three, then you have a significantly incre increased risk of uh, going default. And finally, we have things like uh, debt ratio. And again, notice this initial almost vertical uh, line segment that indicates that people with zero debt ratio, they have the lowest uh, risk of going default. Then the risk jumps once you have amount of debt up to about 
0.4, but it pretty much stays the same. And anyone who is exceeding that ratio, that 40%, now you have a rising risk of delinquency. And finally, number of mortgages here, uh, again, zero, somewhat elevated risk. One and two is the best uh, in terms of risk, and then it gradually rises back up again. And uh, the age here is also interesting. The final variable, it also shows some of the demographic trends. Again, the riskiest segment appears to be 25 years old, then it levels off, and then it becomes even better once people reach retirement age and do all, all, all of the fun things out there. Okay, so what have we learned? We managed to build without implying any assumptions, not imposing any kind of modeling constraints. We just unleashed the power of stochastic gradient boosting on the data set that we have available. And it quickly extracted nonlinear, uh, non-parametric, data-driven signal that immediately told us the localized story. Now, had I been doing it in a conventional statistical way, it would have taken me hours, maybe days. I would have to impose the model structure. I would have to test that model. I would have to run p-values, confidence intervals, all of the other stuff. Uh, and I would really need to have a degree in statistics and probability in order to be able to be successful in that. In this case, I did a very quick data exploration and have accomplished a lot more in a very limited amount of time that this video took. So in the next and final video, now I will take these two models. One is CART and one is TreeNet and quickly show how those can be deployed uh, so that the, uh, the models can be used in production uh, to score new accounts.